Well, welcome to Thursday. Uh, believe it or not, we've been dancing for a little bit. Yeah, we've been dancing <laughs> behind the scenes. Uh, it's a day that people move faster, more quickly, and accomplish uh, that which is uh, yeah, taking a back seat. Yeah. Uh, drag yeah. them back into, into the rest of the week. Now, what makes it even more special is realizing that, hey, you got through all the other days of the week in one piece. <laughs> We're still here, people. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, welcome to your favorite breakfast show. And uh, this is Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, we're back for our daily three-hour ride. And hopefully you're going to join us on this awesome journey. Stay right there with us. My name is Titi Laya Oinsong. And I'm Yomi. <coughs> oh, we've got a great show for you today. There's somebody in the kitchen saying hi. Yeah, she be waving and smiling. Yeah. Hi. Good, Good morning, morning, people. Hey. I'm very excited She's this been busy trying to be a superstar, so uh, wow. she doesn't have our time. <laughs> I mean, it's the on, lifestyle. On the show. It's we the haven't lifestyle. seen you for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah How's it going? You I heard you were I like on you. set and stuff. Yes, I was on set. So many interesting things I'm working on. And yes, it's the superstar lifestyle. Mm. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We get it. We get it. Let the light shine, girl. Hallelujah. And uh, well, hey, when it comes to entertainment, mm. this show is live right on now, terrestrial TV mm. as well as online. TVC and Facebook. Entertainment.tv is the website. Yes, yeah. indeed. Mm. And you can also send in your comments while the show is on. Uh, let me know what you think of my dance steps. Ah. Pretty good. I'm, I'm wow. pretty awesome. Really? I am pretty did you, awesome. Do you, do you want yes, to show indeed. them what you did? I mean, it's going to be on Instagram. So let me know. <laughs> Hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yeah, let him know the truth. <laughs> we have an app available for download as well for Android and iOS. So you can watch us on your mobile devices from anywhere in the world. All uh, right, straight to this morning's highlights. We're lovers of birthdays. And uh, a number of uh, our viewers are celebrating their birthdays this morning. Of course. And we're going to be giving you those shout outs very shortly. Very, very soon. And then that will be followed almost immediately by some great, great music. We have an Afropop singer, Manas Veno, aka MV. I really know the kind of girl you are. She causing trouble in my heart, she makes me high, high. Give me love, way sweet like paradise, girl. Looks so cool and tender. Later on. Visual painter Akindele Damilola will be joining us on the show today. He is uh, pretty good mm. if you see some of his works and uh, he's going to be doing like some sort of exhibition for us today. Also coming up a bit later is a musical rendition, this time from fast rising saxophonist Danny Jazz. Right after that, it's going to be time for the Book of the Week. Mm. Technology Disruption by Taiwo Fajulu. To wrestle or to unleash. <laughs> and then we move on to a chat with a young Nigerian film director, Ade Rogba Adedichi. Now, he's a lover of African stories, and we're going to be finding out a lot more mm. of what he's into. All right. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. As in, we made it. We did. Early. There was no so, traffic today. No. Thankfully. Oh, thank God. Wow. Yesterday was pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> and I was just feeling for you all. I'm really? Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys exercised. Compulsory exercise. Yeah. Well, some, sometimes you just have to get back to your roots. I know. Mm. You know, when we used to walk, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was not like, oh, there's a, there's a malam shop here. Ah, okay. You know. <laughs> Ah, there's a lady that sells bully here. Ah, oh, okay, wow, well, yeah. I never noticed her before. Mm. Uh, but, you know. I, I think, again, one of the things that's, that's happened over the last maybe 20 years or so is that the increase in crime rate has also made people mm. avoid walking when yeah. it's late. True. You know, in the old days, people would do that. You walk yeah. when mm. it's late because everybody sort of knew everybody. Yeah. So it, the, people knew when you came back and, you know, yeah. wave at you and stuff like that. Mm. But now, mm. You know, yeah. a lot of shops close early, so yeah, yeah. you might just suddenly find yourself on a dark street, street somewhere and nobody mm. knows anybody. So it's, it's more difficult for you to 
yeah. uh, to, to walk, take um, walks. But you know, it's, it's, it's a culture though. It's a culture thing. And I guess cultures change or evolve, evolve yeah. eventually. Mm. Because when you go to the abroad, the way you walk, you eh? walk that well, even even in other African walk. even in other African countries, countries. I mean, given some of the East African countries and the Southern African countries mm. are cooler. Yeah. Mm. So the weather the weather is cooler, so you can walk for longer. Yeah. When the the hotter it is, <laughs> the less People you want walk. to walk. Yeah. yeah because when it's, when the sun the outside is like forty degrees, <laughs> you're not really walking comfortably. <laughs> you get you you probably yeah. want to do like ten minutes. Mm. But imagine if it was cold. Mm. Yeah like 16 degrees you, you you would you walk, walk one hour without knowing yeah, yeah. well but you still bundle up now you have to wear but, but you would even, you get you get warm as you're as you walking walk. yes you it get. so be, that's even why you're walking because walk. you want to keep warm i'm actually so opposed to cold it's crazy i, I so really you prefer don't like heat. the cold i prefer this kind of climate to to the the mediterranean mm. climate i i I don't like the idea that temperatures could drop so low that your teeth would be chashing. I heard, that, I heard no. that there are people who, who uh, maybe when they left Nigeria, they didn't know that they had like arthritis and, and things yeah, like that. Until and then suddenly it. they get to a place like maybe Canada yeah. or some other place that's really cool, like Scandinavian countries and yeah. stuff like that. And suddenly hmm. um, the, I mean, it gets really, really bad. Yeah. Like the pain yeah. is unbearable mm. for many And of them. you know, if there's no electricity here, you know, you can find a hand fan or you can just, <laughs> you know, strip off and just sleep in the buff. Yeah. yeah? But abroad, if you don't have gas heating, I not know. die. <laughs> you are on your own. So yeah. you need to make that money and S make it happen. Sleep near the stove. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that. We're going to have to take the news update now. And we know Ibrahim is right there for us. Right, welcome to the news. For those who are trying to who are trying to migrate out of Nigeria going abroad, I think if it's possible, the way they move their you know belongings, they should also move the weather if it's possible. <laughs> There's a way. <laughs> right. How we wish it was possible. <laughs> We begin the news in Borno State, where a corporal of the army serving at the Theatre Command of Operation Lafayette Dole at Malam Fatori went berserk, opening fire on four of his colleagues, killing them before committing suicide. Acting Director of Army Public Relations, Sagir Mosa, says efforts are ongoing to contact the families of the soldiers and an investigation is ongoing to determine the circumstances that led to the unfortunate incident. Our correspondent, Kolomi Dela, give us an update. He killed four of them and two were injured. Uh, the two that were injured are receiving treatment now in a, a military facility here in Medjugorje. Meanwhile, uh, the military authorities within that uh, camp are carrying out an investigation into the incident that happened. Uh, this is an unusual uh, attack, whereby we've never witnessed such an attack within this uh, theater of war. But uh, the, uh, the, a statement released by Colonel Sagir Musa of uh, the director of military uh, public relations said uh, the military authorities are in top gear to find out what are the remote causes of this attack. Well, all is now set for the full operation of the Stamp Duty Act in Kogi, a declaration by the government which says it offers an opportunity to shore up the state's revenue. In a statement, Commissioner for Information and Communication Kingsley, uh, Kingsley Fanwo uh, disclosed that the government will embark on massive sensitization to orientate the people on the operation. It states that it's not the objective of the government to impose heavy tax on the people, but it's looking at areas ignored by previous administrations. Governor Yahya Bello approved the bill to create the act in 2016, becoming the second state after Lagos to domesticate the legislation. 24 babies have been rescued from the hands of alleged child traffickers in Port Harcourt. The River State Police Command says its men acting on intelligence also arrested four suspects during the raid. Pregnant teenagers suspected to have been employed for the purpose of delivering babies for sale were also taken into custody. The young ladies denied working for a baby factory, but police investigation is suspected to reveal uh, further insight into the case. The Almagiri scourge common in northern Nigeria, has been a source of concern to governments and individuals, especially as they form a large percentage of Nigeria's out-of-school children. Just this week, Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje, as a way of dealing with the social menace, placed a ban on street begging by children popularly referred to as Almajiris. 
The effort is to fully consolidate the free and compulsory primary and secondary schools education in the state and address the lingering problem of street begging. Parents or guardians of Almajiri children caught on the streets would also have the law to contend with as they would be arrested and charged to court. The Northeast Development Commission has revealed its plans to support victims of the deadly Boko Haram attack in the Asian Garakida town of Gombe, local government area of Adama State. This will involve assessing the level of damage and partnering in the rebuilding and resettling efforts by Governor Ahmed of Interior. Senior Correspondent Femi Akonde has more. After an assessment visit to the scene of the carnage, this month. The Adamawa State Governor is here at the Northeast Development Commission to seek support for his people in Garakida. Governor Ahmadu Fintiri still wonders why the attackers would strike a community without a history of violent extremism, destroy critical infrastructure and also cut off people's livelihood. We have made effort immediately to provide palliatives. We have further reinforced the town with 100 vigilante to aid and support the armies who are carrying out their operation in Garakira town. We are making effort immediately to start dredging around the town so that it can forestall their easy movement. The managing director of the commission, Mohamed Bouni Alkali, whose job it is to coordinate the reconstruction resettlement and rehabilitation of devastated communities in the Northeast gave the Adamawa state government kudos for its prompt response in meeting the dire needs of the affected communities. He says the commission will prioritize its response plan to include the immediate, short-term and long-term needs of the affected communities. Uh, prioritize those items into immediate, short, mid-term and long-term or whatever so that we will now apportion activities and see what the commission can take immediately and what the state government can take uh, so that uh, life will return to Garkida as quickly as possible. We pray that it will not happen again. But having said all, having seen it yourself, Your Excellency, our hope is that assistance, consideration whatsoever will reach the people. The attackers destroyed parts of the first hospital in the north, two ambulances, key health infrastructure and also destroyed the house of the board chairman of the Northeast Development Commission. Uh, Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Without seeing any news update, let's see what the weather will look like today. Today is Thursday, the 27th of February, and uh, we're starting with the punch headlines this morning. And we have this headline here. It says, Catholic bishops to government, failure to arrest culprits shows federal government's insincerity on killings. And uh, the clerics give a quote here, more on page 9. Right beside the masthead there, it says, Nigeria has the highest TB infection cases in Africa, according to WHO. Federal government awards 29.2 billion naira road contracts to Niger Republic borders. 200 or rather 2.55% GDP growth below population surge, says Man. Uh, 2019 debt servicing gulp 2.1 trillion naira, according to an investigation. It also says here that uh, 
Bayelsa, Supreme Court refuses to sack Diri Awards 60 million naira cost. Uh, of course, the photo story there shows the gridlock on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway on Wednesday. And three AKT teachers arrested allegedly for raping, allegedly raping pupils. A very scary one there. I'll wrap with this. Um, it says here, soldiers beat up Lagos officials for seizing hawkers' wares. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. Mm. Let's look at yeah. The Guardian uh, this morning. Uh, Supreme Court's verdict on Bielsa is final. Uh, justices uh, reject request uh, to review judgment. Alleged move meant to desecrate judiciary. Lawyers to pay 30 million naira fine on applicants. And PDP Dewey Dixon hail ruling. APC keep mum. A few other stories. Mild drama as Monguno Kiari meet in Aso Rock. How mutual suspicion fueled NSA COS feud. And reps move for commission to develop Southwest. And Lagos goes tough on truck drivers as tanker explosion kills three. Medical students stranded, grown as clinical lecturers begin strike. And finally, a court bars federal government agencies from deducting rivers funds over disputed oil wells. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. I have the Nigerian Tribune with me now. It says, as Supreme Court finally dashes APC's hope in Bayelsa, all eyes on Emo. Page two has more information. Leon's application for judgment review dismissed. Uh, it also says here, court finds Afe Babalola Olani uh, 10 million naira each to three mis uh, respondents. Applicants likely to withdraw review requests. Uh, moving to just beside the photo story there, Amotekun Corps, uh, Southwest States to pass uniform bill. Uh, it says here, uh, Reddington Hospital denies coronavirus rumor. It also says here, girl stabs boyfriend to death over 3,000 naira in Ogun. And I'll wrap with this one. Ahead, September poll, security situation in Edo, frightening, according to the police and the DSS. That's what we have on the cover of the Tribune. Yeah, we've got the vanguard here. Insurgency, depressed soldier, Shoots seven, kills self. That's a really, really sad piece of news there. And four dead, three others critically injured. Uh, we're investigating circumstances that led to incident, Army says. And uh, five soldiers were shot with two deaths. Uh, East Wap attacks uh, Chibok village, abducts head of civilian JTF others, and a few other riders are there. Edo 2020, security agencies worry of a spate of violence. Catholic bishops decry federal government's failure uh, to deal with terrorists. And UCH medical consultants down tools over mandatory PhD certificate. Uh, no subsidy from federal government since privatization, says Discos. And uh, on the cover of the Vanguard here, we have uh, two photo stories. Uh, one talking about Ash Wednesday and Cathedral Administration of, Administrator of the Our Lady Queen of Nigeria Parish um, applying ash on the Catholic faithful. And on the other side here, there's a protest against insecurity, again by Catholic faithfuls during a prayer procession against insecurity. Okay. Well, that's what we have on the cover of the Vanguard. We have the traffic update coming up after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now we are about to give tips on the best route for you this morning to get to your destination faster. As always, we encourage that you help other road users by dropping relevant traffic situation reports on all our social media pages using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. This morning we're starting our journey from Abulegba all the way to Mende Underbridge. And this will take you approximately 43 minutes if you set out now. I think it's actually a good start. So we're starting from Pipeline Bus Stop, where we have the Tantalizers restaurant. Now from there all the way to, as, to connecting to Ekoro Road, 
there's slight traffic, sadly, but good thing, as you once you get fully on Ekora Road, connecting to Old Abelkota Old Abelkota Road, it's free flowing traffic all through Old Abelkota Expressway. It's free flowing. As you approach, um, now as you approach the turn that connects you still on Old Abelkota Road, that's this seems to be a real long road. Now there's pockets of traffic in between, but good thing is as the road as the tra as your journey progresses, it eases out all the way through till you get to Okwaba through the police station abattoir, the police station and where the abattoir is, thankfully, is free-flowing through Okoaba GRA scheme, where those estates are free-flowing, Maplewood estates free-flowing, where you have the Lagos State Ministry of Agriculture, there's a pocket of traffic there, but it gets better as you approach Agege. Now, once you get to Agege, where we have the um, Green Hill estate, I don't know what usually happens at this point, because usually I always see traffic whenever I'm talking about this route. Now, there's thick traffic at that point no i'm not sure what's causing it but you have to if you decide to go off and um, leave that route and go through the go through um or relay road now there's slight traffic but it gets better as you get to fagbola street now fagbola street is a good alternative for you so if you're around that axis you might want to take that fagbola street to ade jobby street to ade lamo street now all this takes you and brings you to um, Dok Mu Central Mox. Now, all the way on Dok Mu axis now, I can see that it's free-flowing. But as you approach Oniwaya Mosque, there is thick traffic at that point. The traffic goes all the way through to Capital Road. But just after the, the African Church for the Blessed, the traffic gets better. Now, still on Capital Road, MFM, free-flowing. When you connect back to the old Abelkuta Road, if now connecting back, there's traffic at that point. So I'm sure people are trying to get back on that route uh, is what's causing the traffic. But it gets better. But when you go off now by Akani Doherty Street, not sure what's causing traffic, but there's thick traffic at that point, very thick, all the way through to Ikeja, um, Oba Akran Avenue, all the way down to Ikeja on that bridge. We have pockets of traffic here and there. It's not so bad, to be honest. If you're around the axis, it's not so bad. But once you approach, once you get to under bridge, there's a lot of traffic at that point. And you know how it is from the Mobology Bank Anthony Way, pockets of traffic here and there. But I'm sure if you're taking this route, you will get to your destination. I don't think 43 minutes is that bad. So let's see. Um, hopefully, Yomi and City have updates for me while I check other routes. Uh, yeah, I've got um, a few updates here at Traffic uh, Butter. Uh, four minutes ago, uh, from MFM Prayer City to Magboro inwards Lagos. That means if you're coming to Lagos from that area, uh, it's moving smoothly right now. That's very good. That's good news by comparison with yesterday. Uh, punch to Arikpo and Wawa and the Long Bridge is free. Wow, what a miracle. Um, Fatbems, Opik, Kara, the Kara Bridge and the Ogun River Bridge towards Bega, Otedola Secretariat Motorways. Uh, Abiola Gardens, good to go. So I think everybody just decided that, you know what, this morning, I'm either going to leave very early <laughs> or I'm not going to move at all. Yeah. So all those areas that were blocked yesterday, yesterday uh, that's this whole area here, yeah. from here to Bega, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, all, all around us, um, Otedola, Secretariat, uh, Opik, Kara, mm. uh, all that area. It's, it's nice and free yeah. right now. So not too bad, not too bad. So that's, uh, that's good. That's good. Um, I don't know if you have any uh, updates. No, I actually don't have any updates. It seems like the roads are miraculously free. Nobody's tweeting about any traffic right now anyway. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty free in the, in the, in the area. So if anybody going towards, uh, if you're coming out from that area, either you're going towards the island or you're going towards Ikeja, it, the traffic is light. So just the usual traffic at the major bus stops. Yeah. So, Let's be patient. A few minutes at the bus stop, two minutes at each bus stop, you'll be fine as you move along. But the key usually is try and leave early so that, you know, yeah. give and take. Within an hour, you can get to where you're going. Thank you very much, my fellow officials. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> we have another route from Aja to Bonnie Cantonment. Now, this 
for our island people will take you approximately one hour, 17 minutes. A lot of repairs are going on on the island, so do not, do not get upset because it's only expected. Now, all the way from Abraham Adesonia, or trying to connect to Aja, it's free-flowing, but when you get to where we have the transport companies, there's thick traffic at that point. Usually expected at this time of the morning. Now, after that point, free flowing all the way through to Aja Market. When you get to where they have, we have the intersections of where the traffic lights meet, where all the roads meet, there's pockets of traffic here and there. Now, we have um, slight traffic at the VGC traffic light. Tra um, but after that, it gets better. So it's pretty much traffic at every traffic light point. Uh, when we get to the fourth roundabout, where we have Osakba, London, Jack on the Axis, the traffic actually thickens up, and this goes all the way through House on the Rock, goes all the way through, the, um, all the way through to second roundabout. It shows here that you might want to take the alternative, which is Oniru, but that will take you an extra 25 minutes. So you might just want to stick to the expressway and experience the little traffic at every traffic at every traffic light point, and also where we have the roundabout. But I'm sure you'll get to your destination. Maybe not exactly at the point you want to, but you will get to your destination. I'm going to join Titi and Yomi because there's something interesting I want to talk about this morning. Mm, yes. Oh, okay. So while, while you're while you're making your way here, <laughs> just yeah. a few things that are trending. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that Max Breakfast is trending. Oh, okay. uh, Max Breakfast, the breakfast show from our radio station, Max FM. Well, you know those guys are giving away money, so... Yeah, well, but it's nice <laughs> to see that it's working. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's working out. People are really winning some really great prizes. What are people winning? Yeah. Uh, ah, Max FM, you say. Oh, you know, yeah. Max Millions. They've yeah, been giving they're, they're us they're some good yeah. money. I want to win. You want... I tried the number though, you know. Sometimes Did you I actually no, no, I didn't. I didn't get through. But you're not meant I, to play. I, but I tried. Like I'll when call you and hear say, how much money hello, they're winning. I'll say hello. My name is Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, true. <laughs> you could always change your name. But that aside, See, you then get one of your friends to come and collect the money. Yes. Yeah, and they will share it. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure that um, mm -hmm. the Max FM guys are listening to you. Right yeah, now, so no, it's possible. I don't gonna, have any plans. It's gonna, possible. I'm just filter, saying. Filter this information. <laughs> and I'm just sure saying. Check uh, the calls properly. Somebody cannot play with you before. So we saw. Um, <laughs> so before you give us your gist. Yes, my gist. Um, I, was, I saw something trending today, which I thought was interesting. Um, so Fireboy is trending. Oh. And okay. Okay. I've listened to a couple of his songs, mm. not, not shabby at all. The at guy is pretty all, yeah. good, very talented. And around Africa, he's doing pretty well. Yeah. And so somebody put out a video, uh, a short video, and said that they don't know what Fireboy looks like. Like, oh. Oh. Okay. yeah, that a lot of his videos, he's, he's there with a bunch of guys. You can't and tell who's who. Is who. Yeah. And he doesn't really post uh, on, on social mm. media. And when he, even when he does, he's retweeting other people who are mm. saying how nice his songs are. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that makes a lot of sense because, you know, he's, he's uh, done pretty well over the last year, mm. but he doesn't have a brand, brand identity. Mm. Oh, and okay. that's so also his partly... his face, right? Yeah, yeah his, his face. face yeah. You know, his person, his mm. personality. Like, you, when you see Wizkid, you know he's Wizkid. <laughs> yeah. When you see David O, yeah. you yeah, know this is David O. They, yeah. have, they have a presence, yeah. you know. Uh, even the old guys, the band, Sh Dr. Sid, yeah. you know, there's, there's a presence that they come they with. Have, yeah. So, but now it just looks like, you know, a bunch mm. of these guys, these young boys, Rema, Fireboy, yeah. they just all look the same. <laughs> Okay, Actually, I guess that. They, they, look, they yeah. all look like brothers, yeah. you know, so you can just join all of them together. Yeah. And so I, I think it's all, probably yeah. like a strategy, though, on their, on their part, because of the, what you just said, that they all look alike. The face, you know, was a driving factor for a lot of artists back in the day. The yeah. finer you are, the more <laughs> girls will be other. But now, the fine face was not the reason why people were gravitating towards it. It was the yeah. music. Yeah. Mm. So if the music is working for him, then push the music. It's not always about, you know, the look. Yeah, but I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to have to define yourself at some at point. Some because point. True. it's not all of them that are going to grow together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, there true. are a few mm -hmm. people that are going to fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And so it's the people with the strongest identity that will that go far. Up, yeah, Remember true. that there were a bunch of people who were who were popular, as popular as Justin Bieber was mm, yeah. 10 yeah. years ago. True. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like yeah. it's only Justin Bieber that is around. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is gone. So yeah. Yeah, true. You, you, Define yourself, define your, your brand, and I hopefully think his really, management really is listening. Hopefully yeah. they're listening. All right, so. All right, Tokwe. Yes. So, I, I noticed all this, um, uh, what do they call it again? Henna. I call it, I call it Lali. It's Lily. 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 Yeah? Lily, not yes, Lali. Not Lali. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lily. Yeah, but but it looks is, really great. Thank is you. Is there very a reason much. you have it on? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. which is what I wanted to talk to you all about. <laughs> so, I am currently working on a stage play. Mm -hmm. I have oh. been working on a stage play, and it's going to be showing. 
tomorrow, next tomorrow, next next tomorrow. Um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And this is actually my um, debut on stage after school, of course. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Debut <laughs> on stage. stage. Debut. Okay. My stage debut, yes, yeah, so my stage okay. debut. Yeah. And why I'm really interested in it is because of the message that it passes across mm -hmm. and it's about social media. Oh. How people put out so much information on social media yeah. and they don't know that it could actually be harmful mm. to harmful to them, harmful to their family members because mm. they're yeah. just excited about posting. Right. And this lady comes from the north mm. and is so excited about coming to Lagos and then she puts out so much information and wow. unfortunately she meets some people who want to harvest her body parts. Oh and she does no. Know. In Lagos. Yes, Goodness in Lagos. Me. But then the story still talks about a lot of good things that happen in Lagos. Okay. But because she's so overwhelmed by mm. coming to Lagos, she doesn't know that not everybody here is your okay. friend. Wow. But Goodness I'm not going to tell me. you everything. No, of course. You, you have let to the come. whole cat out yes, of the I bag. Yes, I can't let mm. it out. You have to come and you have to come. But so I mean, where, where is it taking place? Where, mm. where is it? Oh, it's uh, taking details? place at um, Freedom Park. But if you do follow me on Instagram, talk about Lonio. Just yeah. is my most recent post. Mm. All the details are there. I'm, I'm even so going to repost. I'm going so to freedom, repost it. Yeah, Freedom Park. Yeah. Uh, 6 p.m. tomorrow. 6 p.m. Okay. Yeah. 6 p.m. Saturday. Um, 8 p.m. on Saturday as well. It feels like. This is going to be a completely different talk way. Oh, you should see. Like, I'm going to be in my element. Ah, <laughs> wow. As in, I can't wait to see this. It's going to be You must be there, all of you. Uh -uh. You must come. Uh, so, take Freedom yourself. Park. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. 6 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, yeah. right. That's the opening Saturday. show. So I'd really show love tomorrow. to see you guys. Uh, at the and then, uh, if you're not available tomorrow, you can come Saturday, 6 p.m. or oh. 8 p.m. Or you can so, come Sunday. So Saturday, two shows. 6 p.m. Two shows, yes. Sunday, but two shows. Two well. shows. 6 p.m. We have to all go, though. We have to yes, all you pack ourselves and go. Support me. I, I can't wait. But you know, the, the stage for me is a lot, it's, it's so much pressure. It is. You know, all those lines. Yes. Especially. I have been doing a lot of yeah. cramming. Cramming, eh? Yes, and because it's cramming. northern, so I'm infusing Hausa, the accents, oh, putting wow. everything together. Yeah. So it's very nice. I mean, and you know, part of the pressure is also because you're getting immediate feedback. Exactly. Mm -hmm. On stage. So if when you want them to laugh, if they don't laugh, you're just like, hey, exactly. hell. <laughs> or if, if you give like a fantastic monologue, people can just start yeah, clapping. Yeah, start clap. exactly. You know, it's, it's spontaneous. Yeah, you know, it is. Or something happens and, you know, maybe there's a romantic scene, the grab girl, guy grabs a girl oh. and everybody starts, woo, woo. You know, so <laughs> no, it's crazy, you know? you know, it happens. On, uh, yeah, it does. Happens, yeah. yeah, but it, the adrenaline rush mm. is so different from when you're doing film because mm. now you're you're performing, mm. you're literally performing for an audience yeah. and you you know either you're making it or you're breaking it. Oh. At, on, on Stages, spot. man, like uh, yeah. even, even your reaction to things have to be open, yes. boisterous. It's not like camera where you can yeah. see Exactly, movement. where they're taking close up. So people that are sitting from afar <laughs> needs to be able to see that you're angry yes. or like you're, mm. you're sad. And then your voice too. The way you throw your voice exactly. has to be, oh goodness me. You can't lose them. I used Walk. to do stage way back. Yeah. Way back when. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I remember. Had a stage I career. remember. I, wow, career. Career. <laughs> I mean, they were offering me like 3K oh. per show. Oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't working for it's you. Not, it wasn't working. It's I, better I, you now. know, my yeah. taste was already pretty oh high. Mm -hmm. I wanted to buy a car. Mm -hmm. so and like, 3K wasn't going to buy you a car. I would, no. I would have saved for 10 years. <laughs> We're going to use that note to take a break. We'll be back shortly after yes. these messages. The number two is usually associated with the harmony, balance, consideration, and love. Now, when this number comes to you, it means that you should have more faith in your angels. Mm. Mm. Yeah. More faith in your angels. Yeah. It's a special number. More, more faith in God, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Uh, that's why we welcome you to the second hour of the show. Mm. And uh, you, you know, know we are the angels that we're talking about. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. we're, we're, we're the angels. So have more faith in us. Yeah. yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> we still have an hour, 45 minutes to go on your premium family content show. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is where you get everything 
right here. My name is Yomi Ogun. And I'm Titi Laya Oyinson. We need you to stay right there with us. Remember, we're streaming with you. That's on tvcentertainment.tv and of course on Facebook at TVC Connect. Mm. Send in your comments across our social media platforms. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria. On TVC. Mm. Now we have an app available for you to download. Hopefully it's on your device already. If it's not, just visit the Android or iOS store. Make sure you can watch us from anywhere you are in the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Chef Ify is back with us yeah. uh, today on the show. I'm not sure she's in the kitchen yet, but I Tupper. know Tupper is there. Yeah. On stand. Yeah, yeah she's, she's right there. Here. Good morning. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. What are you making for us this Welcome morning? back, Chef. Mm -hmm. Just wait and see. Oh, okay. She says we should <laughs> wait and see. Ha. <laughs> ah. We are waiting and we will see. We're mm. waiting. We're waiting. Definitely. Wait and see. I like it. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Anyway, <laughs> still to come on the show today, our first musical performance from Afro pop singer uh, Manas Beno, a.k.a. MV. Tinko, 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 little spice. I really know the kind of girl you are. She causing trouble in my heart, she makes me high, high. Give me love, way sweet like paradise, girl. Looks so cool and tenderly. Girl, everything, girl, about you so special. When I look into your eyes, I go mentally, but temporarily. Also joining us for a mini exhibition is an expressive visual painter. Akindele Damilola. We still have another musical rendition uh, from fast rising saxophonist Danny Jazz. On book chat today, our book is Technology Disruption, To Wrestle or To Unleash. Now, that's the book we'll be reviewing this week. The author is Taiwo Fajolu, and he'll be here for a chat on what the book's about. Finally, we'll move on to a chat with a young Nigerian film director, Adirogba Adediji, who is a lover of African stories. You don't want to miss this guy. He's pretty talented. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Telling stories. Yeah. I like it. Good you know, I, I, uh, there was a time I did a travel, I, I, I don't want to call it a tour, but it was sort of like a tour, mm -hmm. and I was recording really old people okay so they're just telling me like stories yeah. some of them would read out orikis and mm -hmm. some of the stories that i heard especially when i started getting towards um ekiti into into kogi state and all of that man <laughs> some <laughs> like, deep stories some deep stories so there there was there was one uh, i don't know if we we'll have time for this mm -hmm. so there was one where they said an old man yeah. he wanted to walk from kaba in Kogi State mm -hmm. to Ife, and he did it in one night. Uh, but he used, we well, listen, <laughs> he used other people's legs oh. while they were asleep. Uh, so really? all the people he had touched that day, so by the time it was nighttime, he was able to walk How did he all night. Do that? Yeah. I don't get it. So if I said hi to you during the yeah. day, right, uh -huh. it, it meant that I would use your legs during the night to walk. Oh, so what? he probably so once the legs started getting tired, yeah. So he, so you would be just be sleeping. You just feel like your legs are getting tired. You know why? No. So once the legs start oh, getting God. tired, he just moves on to the next person that he touched during the day. Oh, and then by morning, oh my God. by morning he was in, he was in Ife. So he kept pace. He was kept wow. Pace. Come back. All the people he touched in Ife. Yeah, of they course. Came so back all the people he touched in Ife. You know, How going many back years ago was this? This was like a hundred years ago. Oh, okay. So I, he's I, gone. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> He's gone. How did he do that Why in he one come night? Back, to be honest. Goodness. I don't know, but that's that was the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are the kind of things I heard. Is it yeah. those stories that just scare you to not talk to strangers? <laughs> <laughs> so, don't touch strangers. Uh, well, you can talk of, to them. Speaking of touching, uh, this coronavirus thing, I don't yeah. know. It's affecting football matches now. Yeah, it affecting is. Fashion Week in Milan. Yeah. It's just it's getting yeah. alarming. Uh, we have to head over to the news update now. Ibrahim, it's all yours. 
Now, welcome again. A corporal of the army serving at the Theatre Command of Operation Lafayette Dole at Malam Fattery went berserk, opening fire on four of his colleagues, killing them before committing suicide. Acting Director of Army Public Relations, Sergio Mosa, says efforts are ongoing to contact the families of the uh, soldiers and an investigation is ongoing to determine the circumstances that led to the unfortunate incident. Our correspondent, Kulu Midela, has an update. And two were injured. Uh, the two that were injured are receiving treatment now in uh, a military facility here in Medjugorje. Meanwhile, uh, the military authorities within that uh, camp are carrying out an investigation into the incident that happened. Uh, this is an unusual uh, attack, whereby we've never witnessed such an attack within this uh, theater of war. But uh, the, uh, the, a statement released by Colonel Sagir Musa of uh, the director of military uh, public relations said uh, the military authorities are in top gear to find out what are the remote causes of this attack. All is now set for the full operation of the Stamp Duty Act in Kogi, a declaration by the government which says it offers an opportunity to shore up the state's revenue. In a statement, Commissioner for Information and Communication Kingsley Fanwo disclosed that the government will embark on massive sensitization to orientate the people on the operation. It states that it's not the objective of the government to impose heavy tax on the people, but it is looking at areas ignored by previous administrations. Governor Yahya Bello approved the bill to create the act in 2016, becoming the second state after Lagos to domesticate the legislation. And 24 babies have been rescued from the hands of alleged child traffickers in Port Harcourt. The River State Police Command says its men acting on intelligence also arrested four suspects during the raid. Pregnant teenagers suspected to have been employed for, this, uh, for the purpose of delivering babies for sale were also taken into custody. The young ladies denied working for a baby factory, but police investigation is expected to reveal further insight into the case. The number of new coronavirus infections inside China has, for the first time, been overtaken by fresh cases elsewhere with Italy, Iran and South Korea emerging as new hot, uh, hot spots for COVID-19. The disease was also detected for the first time in Brazil, Pakistan, Sweden, Norway, Greece, Romania and Algeria. In the United States, where health authorities are dealing with 59 cases, President Donald Trump sought to, uh, to calm concern, uh, says the U.S. is very, very ready to face the virus threat, as it puts Vice President Mike Pence in uh, charge of national response. Italy now has 400 cases, with cases reported in several European countries traced to Italy. Globally, more than 80,000 people is about uh, in about 40 countries have been infected. Brazil's health ministry has confirmed its first coronavirus outbreak. The health minister, Luiz Henrique Mandetta, says a Sao Paulo president has been diagno diagnosed uh, with the virus, with, uh, which is the first case to be recorded in Latin America. The 61-year-old patient returned from Lombardy region of Italy, the epicenter of an outbreak in the European country. And as a news update for this hour, stay tuned for the video. Good morning, guys. Welcome to morning. the kitchen. And we have Chef Ify ready yo, yo, to yo. turn things up in the kitchen here, Steve. Mm, everything's good. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have uh, quite a lot of ingredients in front of me, and I'm yes. for the life of me, I don't know what you're making. I'm <laughs> telling you, I can't figure it out. It's none of the basics, really, uh, but you have an interesting combination. So, yes. Chef, if so you tell us what today you're Today, we're making something simple but healthy. Okay. So, we're making boy yam with avocado puree and fried egg and shrimp sauce on the side. Boiled yam? Yes. That's, we get that part. Let's leave that one <laughs> Avocado puree, puree yes. and... Fried egg and shrimps. Fried egg and shrimps. Yes. That's an interesting combination right there. Fried egg and shrimps. Hmm, I'm connecting small. Then avocado puree. I'm learning something today, y'all. Look at the ingredients on your screen. We have eggs, onion, tomato, yam slices, of course, stock cubes, orange juice. Hmm, where's that going to go? Uh, salt, mm -hmm. vegetable oil, shrimps, avocado, um, fresh pepper, fresh pepper and, black, and pepper. black pepper. 
Mm. Hopefully. And then we miss out the yes. green chili and then vegetable. So what type of vegetable is this? That is ugu pumpkin. Ugu? Yes. Um, is it um, steamed or No, no, just no, fresh? just fresh. Okay, beautiful. Are these boiled eggs or raw, raw eggs? eggs? Raw eggs. Yes, All fried right. egg. So what's the first thing we need to do? You've obviously Boiling the yam. put the yam on the fire. Yes. Did you slice it in any particular no, way? No, just to your preference, okay. anyhow you want it. Beautiful. All right, so what's next? Okay, when, we when the yam is cooked, we start with the fried egg. Okay. So, and then this avocado we are using for the puree, and then the orange goes into the avocado, and then the black pepper and a little bit of salt. Okay, can we start with the avocado puree mm, process do that, now? Yes. All right, let's do that. Okay. You've been slicing um, some yeah, of your This is going uh, together with the eggs. Okay. Yes. So obviously you're not done slicing those yet, no. but this so avocado, just... I'm very interested. So we we'll see the end product. Eh? <laughs> we we'll see the end product. Yeah, but you you have to show me now. It's not. <laughs> I want to see. It's not. Okay. Uh, can you can you show me now? Is it possible to be, to do it now? It is. Now. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm a big fan of avocado. It's. Uh, what Very they call healthy. Healthy fat. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Healthy and then fats. Your orange looks. Uh, very fresh. I'm wondering how the orange is going to play a part in all this as well. So uh, once again, if you can see the ingredients on the screen there, uh, we have shrimp here, we have egg, we have ugu leaves, we have fresh tomatoes, onions, we have green peppers, and um, fresh pepper. That's a, a chili, right? That's the green yes, chili. Yes, green chili. All right. So this avocado, you picked it this color deliberately or? Yes, it's okay. fresh. Fresh? Yeah, it's very fresh. Mm -hmm. so, so what do we do to it? I will need a um, spoon. A please. spoon? A yes. spoon? Okay, I got you. I got you. Let me see. All right, I got a spoon. Okay. There you are. Thanks. All right, so what are we doing with so the avocado? Are we? We just scoop, scoop it out. Okay. Put in a plate, or if you have a blender, you put in your blender. Adding the orange juice mm -hmm. and then black pepper, a little bit of black pepper, and then a pinch of salt. Okay. You just mash it so you blend it. All right. So you scoop it out. Yeah. Add your black pepper, a bit of salt. Yeah. Orange, so, the orange juice is just to make it a little bit creamy. Oh, okay. Yes. Is there anything else I could add to make it creamy? Mm, no? Maybe you can skip this and use the lemon. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, that's if you want the zest. Okay. Yeah, lemon taste. All right. Now we have to take a quick break. As you can see, it's going to be an interesting one today. We're learning something brand new. We're going to be making an avocado puree to go with boiled yam. Mm -hmm. So I did first. This is Wake Up Nigeria. We'll be back after this. night of recognition, entertainment, encouragement has guests attended in grand style the biggest and most comprehensive digital awards in Africa, celebrating excellence in five key areas of innovation, entertainment, information, inspiration and commerce. It's the first edition of the Gage Awards 2020 and we are super, super excited. Today we're going to be bringing to you all the glitz, all the glam, all the fashion style and also I'm going to be talking to some of the nominees and awards winners of tonight's event. My name is Betty Egado and I'm your host for tonight's event. It's all about celebrating the good of the web. It was a gathering of internet stars shining on a single light. Five of the categories were uh, strictly were audience choice. It means that the audience get to choose who their winners are. So uh, we didn't have any influence. We had PricewaterhouseCoopers come in to um, audit the system to ensure that it was transparent and it did the right thing. Because the other 19 categories are not categories that the audience can actually um, um, pick winners because they don't have the kind of information to help them pick like website of the year. The audience doesn't know about structured navigation. They don't know about uh, user experience. They just go in there and do their transaction online. You know, So they, we, we, picked a pa uh, we picked a panel of ju judges that are very um, good in these areas to help select winners in those areas. This is an award that recognizes people who are doing stuff, you know, uh, on the web, you know, new media and all that stuff, which is uh, it's amazing. You know, I, I think it's a great concept and I think that uh, 
you know, it would, it would go far. Good music was not left out as singer Johnny Drill thrilled the audience with an amazing performance. I think people need to be um, recognized for the great things they do. Um, it just encourages a lot more people, other people, to want to do just that or even more. I know a lot of people don't do it for the awards, but it's just, um, it's just a bit fulfilling, even for people that are watching from the outside, to see that you get recognized for amazing work that you do, and that it's not taken for, for granted, that people actually do appreciate you. So, I mean, big shout out to everyone, everyone at Gage Awards for putting this together. The Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, represented by the Honorable Commissioner of Science and Technology, Mr. Hakim Popola Fam, had this to say. Um, Lagos State Government um, is investing a lot in technology and being an enabler of technology in the state and also in the nation. So it's important for us to encourage any opportunity where we see that people are being honored for their performance and we're very delighted to be part of this event. Awardees and brands were super excited to be recognized for their good works in the web space. I think if you look at them, one of the criteria that the judges were looking at was a case of um, um, something that um, has that viral appeal or something that has a lot of local content or local insights. And I think the Airtel's in-laws, you know, has that a uh, couple of um, you know, people online you know, have talked about it, so it's, it has all of, that, all of those qualities, and I think that's why um, it won. Well, for sex for grades, uh, definitely. This one is on behalf of everyone at the Africa Eye team that put together that film, uh, from production, investigations, uh, research, every single person that made it possible for that film to become what it is today. This one's for all of them. I was I was really happy. Even if even if I wouldn't win, I was really happy. I was nominated, and winning is is like a really big deal for me. I really appreciate everyone that voted for me out there. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have you ever imagined life without web, internet, or social media? We will survive. I actually prefer the way we were back then. No social media, no nothing. Everybody would interact in real life. It's 1950 and we survive talking to each other, watching TV, going to drive-ins and actually engaging in person. For the convener, Mr. Johnson Anno, the Gage Awards going forward will be the biggest gathering of the digital space in the whole Africa and aims at celebrating individuals and brands who are doing well in the digital space and who will also bring more innovation and by extension make the life of Africans simple and better. All right, that was a really great event, uh, the Gage Awards. A really yeah, nice back. one there, really nice. All right, so in the kitchen today we have Chef Ify and she's started something very, very special. She's been boiling yam. The yam part, we say we just leave that one to us. <laughs> just leave the yam. She's making an avocado puree and um, egg and shrimps, right? Yes. Egg and shrimp sauce or egg and shrimp? Egg and shrimps. Okay, egg and shrimps. <laughs> All right, so what's the next move? Well, we saw you earlier okay, scooping out the avocado from the shell. Okay, so just these oranges. Or, okay, fresh orange juice yes, from here. Yes, fresh oranges, yes. Okay. Just to make it a little bit of... Um, so that it won't be too, yeah, it's creamy. It won't be too thick. Mm. So this black pepper. Just black pepper. Just a little. Okay. You know. ah, that one is more than a little. That is that? No, it's that is. <laughs> Half a teaspoon, I guess. Yeah, okay. And then yes. a bit of salt. Yeah. Not that much. No, no, no. Okay. All right then. So, so. just mash this one spoon. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so the spoon is uh, it's not going to do the I'll job bigger one. that quickly. Yes, but I so can do that for you while you okay. do other things. Thank so you. what's the next thing? So hmm? the yam is almost cooked. Okay. So we start our 
vegetable. Okay. The vegetable you have there is ugu leaf, right? No, that's going in with the egg. Okay. So this is just on the side. This is onion, tomatoes, green pepper, okay. the green chili, and then um, mm. scott bonnets. All right, so what are you looking to achieve with this? Do you want this it just to like fry? A hot, no, just like, um, just want to steam it a bit okay. so it won't be raw okay. while you're chewing it. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, you put in some vegetable oil? Yeah, just a little. Okay. okay. And in it goes. So uh, as you can see, those vegetables are very, very colorful. I'm still yes. wondering how the finished product can look. So the shrimps also goes in with this. Okay. I'm still here mashing the avocado here with the orange juice. Um, I think it would have been easier with a blender. No, I just actually have blender. blender. I actually have blender. You have one. a blender here? Yes. Okay, we can bring Blend. that out. Yeah, have oh, one. you have a blended one here. Oh, yes. beautiful. You see? You see? So, just yeah. blend. So, you want me to blend it now? Okay, you can actually add that to I'll add this, yes. and then I'll blend it right here. The handy portable blender there. Let's add that to it like this. Remember, she added a black pepper and a pinch of salt to that. Okay. Now, all you have to do is, I believe, yes. okay. All right. Okay. And that's the sound you're looking for when you're blending. You want it to be as smooth as possible. And that's that. And that's it. Yes. There you have the avocado blended in with the orange juice. I wonder how it would have tasted with lemon juice, though. I think it would have been a lot sharper. Yes. I and just saw you add little. something to just the cube. pan. Yes, just a little bit of stock cube and salt. All right. Just a little. Stock cubes, salt. Yes. And of course, you've added the shrimps, the shrimps to the pan yes. as well. So this is ready like this. Mm -hmm. All right. So you don't want it to turn brown. No, 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 no. You just want Fresh. it. Fresh. All right. So it's ready. Goodness me. Okay, look at those ingredients so, one more time. Uh, we have eggs, we have onion, tomato, yam slices, stock cubes, orange juice, salt, vegetable oil, shrimps, avocado, fresh pepper, and black pepper. All right. So you're adding a bit more oil to the pan so there. I just want to fry Ooh. the eggs. Huh? This looks good. Looks so good. So. Hmm? All right. So in here, what do we have? We have onion. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes, yeah, the green peppers, and then scotch bonnet, fresh pepper. All right, beautiful. Is that going in the pan now? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the sound we're looking for. It's That's the sound we're looking for. Well, it's about time for us to take a quick break. There's still quite a bit for us to do here in the kitchen. And before you know it, this amazing meal will be ready. Stay with us, people. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, we have something special happening in the garden. As usual, on Thursdays, we have our art display segment and we bring some of the most talented artists that you can find in Nigeria right here on the show. A lot of them are pretty young, like this gentleman here. Uh, his name is Damila Akindele. And thank you so much for joining us on the show. I love your work. Really, really, um, you pay a lot of attention to detail. I lo like what you did with uh, some of your monochrome. Uh, okay, well, this is not monochrome, this is yeah, dual wet and black charcoal. Uh, exactly. Here. So yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, a few of your works and then if we have time, we'll go deeper into some okay. other areas. So how are you doing today? I'm fine, sir. Wow. So uh, I'm seeing, uh, so this is charcoal work, what yeah, we're seeing yeah, here, right? Yeah. So talk to us about these two. Yeah, actually, um, I've been trying to look into some, some, to some ideas though. Mm. And I actually came out with some metaphorical yellow, yellow drawings. Yeah. So yeah. I feel, I don't feel, 
uh, draw, looking during um, a pencil drawing, and at the end of the day, it's just looking at what people are doing. Exactly. So exactly. I feel. Let me just make my drawings so different. So this is like a twist to the usual yeah, pencil yeah, and charcoal yeah, yeah. drawing. So, so I titled some of them my, my metaphorical series. Mm. Yeah. So what 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 do you uh, what would you say is the uh, s uh, significance of this yellow that you put in yeah. this two drawings? Actually, uh, when I when I come to this idea. I see yellow as an illuminous um, color in the color spectrum. Yeah. Though I see it's very brighter. Then I, I give it, it actually serves as a means of solution mm. to my works. Mm. Like this, I'm talking seeing to the future. When you look so at this, this, this one is seeing to the future. To the future. Mm. And it's a question to me as a youth. I feel, uh, why, where are we going as a Nigeria youth after we go for some schools and all the years and there's nothing we just stay at home mm. so just like a question for me for someone to answer me yeah. and so that, that's I, I, i'm also seeing uh, there seems to be some kind of light in their yes. eyes so does this mean like hope for the future yes exactly mm. we are hoping we youth are open though to see what is going to give us at the end of the day so when we just look at the future mm. and let's see how it's going to benefit us youth nowadays yes i love it i, I, I like i like much. the technique that you also use on the sides here because you didn't feel this for this one you didn't feel the whole page with, yeah, yeah, with yeah, drawings yeah. it's almost like it's coming out of the page exactly. kind of very exactly. nice very nice well done and this other one over here same yeah. concept uh, that you use yeah for, actually for same well. concept but different types for it mm. um i remember the inspiration come from a book i read while i was in school uh, mm. hopeless but not Homeless. Hopeless but not homeless. Yes. Hmm. And very versa. Yeah. Homeless but not hopeless. So I see this lady so homeless, but she's not hopeless. So there's hope in her eyes. Yes, there's as hope well. in her. Hmm. So I, I still put in the yellow color hmm. to it. To create that vibrancy yeah, that Yeah, exactly. Is that that there is still solution for that. Hmm. If you are homeless and you still have hope, I think this will be something being to be to be achieved with that. All right, very nice, very nice. And now let's go to the colors because I know that you also you also use colors very yeah, very yeah, well. Yeah. Um, over here we've got something really special. I don't know how you did this, but this is is this oil on canvas? Your, your regular this oil is on canvas. acrylic on canvas. Okay, acrylic, acrylic yeah. on canvas. Uh, so talk to us about this one. Yeah, this is um in series two because okay, this is I in the series. Yeah, series two looking mm. to the future gazing deep to the future as i said earlier mm. so it talking was, about young people i noticed that that's yeah. one of the things i noted in, in in all the works that we're displaying today you're using young models young people yes exactly. uh, in different in different aspects exactly, uh, exactly. Different, different models as well okay, so, so this one is also hope it's, for the future exactly exactly because it's it's actually be a a think i've been thinking so much about this this called you know youth era of nowadays now mm. that's how are we going to make it? Because sometimes I would just be in my, in my room and be thinking of how are we going to, to make this? Mm. So I don't know, people just, people are just so desperate. I think the, the, the leaders of now, they don't want to leave the space for us. Mm. Even the, uh, the artists of nowadays now, they don't want to promote any younger. The younger, the younger exactly. guys that so are coming up. It's, it has been, I've been, it has been a problem for me though mm. in my quiet so, but, but you also, but I can see that you, you're also taking that all those frustrations and you're expressing it on, on exactly. canvas because this yeah. is this is a really powerful painting yeah. here, very talented Sincerely. and very international as well. You can display this anywhere in the world. Is I, I can see that uh, you know you're going pretty far Thank with you. your work. Now let's go to this next one here. It's what it's a big one. Yeah. Uh, now I like like you said. You know we we're talking earlier and we we're talking about the fact that. What, we're talking about young people, right? Yeah. And this one too expresses a different kind of young person. I can see that these guys are on the street. Yeah. Uh, Alabaros. Uh, yeah. So this is a yeah. wheelbarrow, yeah. and they're just on the street. And this guy just looks like <laughs> this is life right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I'm seeing from this people. Uh, tell me, I tell give me you your, the title: Waiting for Today's Profit. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I was waiting for today's, today's profit. profit. Hmm. So this guy doesn't relent. He has been on the road. For, for more than hours, looking for customers. And then these Molam guys over mm. there from K2, you, you see them in Yaba, mm. Oyembo. So these guys are hustlers. And they push wheelbarrows for Sincerely, miles. I look at the way they, 
they, they do things at times. Mm. The way they, they struggle, the way they hose us. Mm. That's amazing. We, we have to, we don't, we don't have that much time. I want us to stand up and look at this one <laughs> yeah. uh, over here. That this is, uh, this is also one that um, has a deep meaning to it. Yeah. Uh, this is a young guy uh, standing, looking, uh, looking forward to the future, it seems. Exactly. But he doesn't have clothes on. So talk, talk to us about this. This, yeah. this work, actually, um, is a friend of mine. I use him as a model. His mm. name is Mobala Dijon. Um, I got to, to make this thing and I titled it The Courageous. I feel um, anything we do in life, we have to be courage. Mm. Like, if you don't face it, I don't know how you can get rid of it. Mm. So, so this one is just like, like my a life. profile in courage exactly. as well. Exactly. You can see the one in background mm. thinking of how can I make it. Wow. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. I mean, your works are really, really good. They're Thank impactful. You so they tell a story of the Nigerian yes. youth. I can see all of them from all the ones that we've looked at today. And I'm sure you have lots more as well. Exactly. How can I find you on Instagram just before we go? Yeah, I just find me on Instagram, Akindele John. Akindele Instagram. John yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, it's on my Facebook, Damlola Akindele. All right, let's patronize this guy. This guy is going places and I'm sure that pretty soon you're going to be winning awards as well. Yeah, yeah, all right, we're heading over to uh, back in the studio where Topa is on standby for us. Yes, now let's get with a musical performance from this man right here, Manas Joseph. Now his stage name is Manas Veno. He is an Afropop singer and songwriter from Delta State who is currently based in Lagos. He is about to give us our very first musical performance this morning. Now tell me, what are you performing for us? All right, I'm performing a song um, titled Hola. Hola? Yeah. Hola or Hola? Hola. Hola, okay, so what inspired the song? Um, I, there was this girl I met, with her, um, her name was Hola. Her name was Hola? So, yeah, so I just decided to do a song for her. Okay, let's have you blow our minds away with Hola. Her. Your love for me now. What's so special, baby, we are meant to be. It's our love, this way, but till in time. Say no matter man can fit to send him it. Cause if them try to buy a good day, any miss. What's so special, baby, we are meant to be. It's our love, this way, but till in time. Say no matter man can fit to send him Excuses are found in the hearts of the uncommitted, and it keeps you in constant self-limiting uh, situations. Now there are no excuses if you have another chance to get to catch up with us for the rest of the show. Yeah, very correct. Thank yeah. you. Just tuning in. Welcome to the third hour of Wake Up Nigeria. Stay right there. We still have quite a bit mm -hmm. coming your way on the show today. My name is Yomi Oke, and I'm Titi Laoyin. So get online right now and stream with us if you have to leave. Just go to tvcentertainment.tv and of course Facebook Live at TVC Connect. Yeah, the whole studio is just full of some very nice aroma. Mm -hmm, the food. Ah, Chef, if you're doing something special in the kitchen, look Ooh, at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at those shrimp. Ah, shrimp, 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 shrimp. shrimp. So mm. colorful. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You guys, well done. Nice one. Anyway, we're streaming live right now on tvcentertainment.tv. Uh, you can also download our app uh, on the, the, your mobile app, uh, yep. your mobile store. Mobile app store. <laughs> yeah. Mobile app store. They get it. They yeah. Get it. <laughs> so download it and you can also watch us live on the app as well. We honestly have quite a lineup still to come. Uh, we have a musical rendition from fast rising saxophonist Danny Jazz. Yeah, that team getting set, that team getting set. Yeah, looking forward to that one, uh, that performance later on. Technology disruption, how to wrestle or uh, to wrestle or unleash. Uh, that's a book that we're going to be looking at uh, this morning. It's written by Taiwo Fajulu and it's going to be here very shortly. And finally, we move on to chat with young Nigerian film director 
someone who's a lover of African stories, Adirogba Adiji. Adidiji, sorry. You don't want to miss this one. Okay. Omo. It's so what's up with that week. kitchen? Are you guys done in the kitchen? It looks like... It's, it's, it's me that's in the kitchen, kitchen today. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's sorry. me that's in the kitchen. <laughs> he's, 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 he, he, I remember Because no, I saw you in the kitchen ah, yeah. earlier. In the first hour and then second hour. So mm, I just yeah. that. Oh, no. yeah. Well, Chef so, Ify just has a way of bringing some interesting flavors together, you know? Yeah. She brought out avocado. I'm like, huh? She brought out orange, I'm like, huh? Yeah, and then I saw she oranges, brought out like, shrimp, like, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just trying to be dramatic. So she put everything together in, in... Um, So I know that there's an avocado sauce, uh, well, like a puree. Mm. And then there's the shrimp with eggs. So we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll give you the finished product soon. I wonder if there's someone who really follows the show for the kitchen and mm. probably takes down recipes and yeah. tries them out. Use your husband as a guinea pig. Yeah. So, <laughs> Hobby, We've this actually, is what I learned today on Wake Up Nigeria. Tasted by force. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's actually there are some people that actually jot down some of the, the things from our experts. Yeah. So the experts coming in, they they know that this expert is coming for motivation on yeah. Monday. They know that we have a relationship on I think uh, Wednesday and all that. So yeah. they they actually stand by for it and they take yeah. note of things. But I I say yeah. I take knowledge from the kitchen. Mm. I remember. Right. I did attempt to make them, I can't remember which of the chefs came, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they, um, he used um, the flour on mm. the chicken, mm. and then I went home, and yeah, it, 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 it didn't it, quite it, work out. It didn't quite work out. <laughs> <laughs> but good thing, mm. I ate it by myself, mm -hmm. I know how it was. But uh, it would be great to see videos from you at home, yeah. if you have a video of yourself trying out any of our recipes, mm. we would love to add that to you know part of our show you know possibly. yeah that would be nice show uh, us some actually, videos yeah that's, of that's you a... cooking putting the ingredients together and mention the chef that you learned it from on yeah, the show and then we'll probably yeah. put it on okay yeah, that's we, a, we could play that that's yeah, a new segment yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just on live on the live show just introduce the new segment, new segment. <laughs> Oh, wow. Viewer chef. <laughs> chef viewers. Chef viewers. You chef take viewers. a video of yourself in the kitchen uh, with one of our And you stand a chance of being part of the show. Exactly. Yes. Send it to us. Ibrahim, uh, are you going to try out our chef search? <laughs> I will, if you allow me. I will definitely do. Gladly. A corporal of the army serving at the theater command of Operation Lafayette Dwelly at Malam Fatari went berserk, opening fire on four of his colleagues, killing them before c committing suicide. Acting Director of Army Public Relations, Sagri Moses, says efforts are ongoing to contact the families of the soldiers and an investigation is ongoing to determine the circumstances that led to the unfortunate incident. Our correspondent, Kulu Midala, has an update. And two were injured. Uh, the two that were injured are receiving treatment now in a, a military facility here in Medjugorje. Meanwhile, uh, the military authorities within that uh, camp are carrying out an investigation into the incident that happened. Uh, this is an unusual uh, attack, whereby we've never witnessed such an attack within this uh, theater of war. But uh, the, uh, a statement released by Colonel Sagir Musa of uh, the director of military uh, public relations said uh, the military authorities are in top gear to find out what are the remote causes of this attack. All is now set, uh, fully set, uh, the, the full operation of the stamp duty act in Kogi, a declaration by the government which says it offers an opportunity to shore up the state's revenue. In a statement, Commissioner for Information and Communication Kingsley Farnwood disclosed that the government will embark on massive sensitization to orientate the people on the operation. It states that it's not the objective of the government to impose tax, uh, heavy tax on the people, but it's looking at Areas ignored by previous administrations, Governor Yahya Bello approved the bill to create the act in 2016, becoming the second state after Lagos to domesticate the legislation. 24 babies have been rescued from the hands of alleged child traffickers in Port Harcourt. The River State Police Command says its men acting on intelligence also arrested four suspects during the raid. Pregnant teenagers suspected to have been employed for the purpose of delivering babies for sale were also taken into custody. The young ladies deny working for a baby factory, but police investigation is expected to reveal further insight into the case.
The number of new coronavirus infections inside China has, for the first time, been overtaken by fresh cases elsewhere in Italy, Iran and South Korea, emerging as new hotspots for COVID-19. The disease was also detected for the first time in Brazil, Pakistan, Sweden, Norway, Greece, Romania and Algeria. In the United States, where health authorities are dealing with 59 cases, President Donald Trump sought to calm concerns, says the U.S. is very, very ready to face the virus threat as it puts Vice President Mike Pence in charge of national response. Italy now has 400 cases, with cases reported in several European countries traced to Italy. Globally, more than 80,000 people in about 40 countries have been infected. Also, Brazil's health ministry has confirmed its first coronavirus outbreak. The health minister, Luiz Henrique Mandetta, says a Sao Paulo resident has been diagnosed with the virus, which is the first case to be recorded in Latin America. The 61-year-old patient returned from Lombardy region of Italy, the epicenter of an outbreak in the European country. And as you know, the news update on Wake Up Nigeria, let's bring you the weather forecast again for the last time. Bye now. performances this morning. Now we have Danny Young, we have Alimi and Abayomi and as you can see I already enjoyed my very first performance but you know what I'm going to go away so you can blow our minds away. You can dance. Uh, no don't worry let me allow everybody to enjoy it <laughs> okay thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ah, uh, amazing performance there. We love our Wednesday uh, live performances right here on the show. Thursday, actually. Now for Book Chat, we have something special. Uh, now in my hand, uh, technology disruption. To wrestle or to unleash by Tayo uh, Fajilo. Now, uh, this book is, is amazing. I, I feel like it's one of the books I would need at this time and age. It's an African response to a global perspective and demand for new creative enterprise and innovative technology. And of course, the author is joining us on the show. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having for joining us on the show, sir. Thank you. Um, now, um, first question: Why are you disrupting me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is uh, w the the opening, what, what you opened with the, the first chapter in the book. Uh, that's usually what people would ask, or that would be their response to any new thing that is happening, that is sort of upending everything that they've ever known. Yes, right. Is that where you're coming from with this book? Yes. I mean, it's it's a, it's a conversation starter that you know and someone you and you you and i could engage in a conversation and the question could come up why are you disrupting me mm. and then so the pondering is engaged mm. that why are you disrupting what is disruption about and then so that's that kicks in several other questions mm. and all that so it also demarcates our response towards disruption mm. i mean do, do we want to rest so much when you go down to see what disruptions are. Yeah. On one side, you want to wrestle it down mm. because it's, it challenges the status quo. It challenges what is, what is on now mm. to cause a change for the path for new thing. And then we now, when a new thing is created and is adopted or unadapted, they would need to unleash it for growth. Mm. I like, I like um, how you started the book you know, in the, at the beginning, in the introduction where it seemed, you were t talking about the fact that it seemed like innovation began in Africa. Right. Uh, you, you talked about Egypt and, you know, uh, way back when, the center of global knowledge. Everybody came to Egypt to come and learn, learn something. And right. then, of course, there was the invasion of Egypt and all of that. What do you think now accounts for the fact that even though Africa was at the forefront of innovation, we now seem to have taken the back seat and we're playing catch up with the rest of the world. Well, the problem started from then. We, we put, and we're still doing it now, we put everything as, we, 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 we put it in a mystical form, in such a way that thing that could have helped us. And then when they put it like that, they didn't allow other part of Africa to enjoy it. They kept it to themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's little to what you can keep to yourself. One way or the other, some people will penetrate your ranks and they will use it for their own goal. And that was what happened to Egypt at that time. Mm -hmm. So when um, Alexander the Great got into that, being someone who is after knowledge, he got the Egyptian library, moved it to Europe, mm -hmm. and then allowed Aristotle to intervene into that. Mm -hmm. And Aristotle created a school, a peripatetic school that lasted for 2,000 years, mm -hmm. a school of scientific research, nothing to be compared with it. Until after, to, in fact, in logistic logic, but for, for 150 years could not be challenged mm. until further thought start challenging it. And, that and most, of, most of this was gotten from Africa uh, yes. uh, at that initial stage. So yes. it just seemed like even that knowledge, <coughs> that body of knowledge that we had yes. was taken from us. Yes. Now, for at some point, you know, when I was reading this book, I just felt like you're also telling us to wake up to right. the realities of the 21st century of what's happening and of the changes that, that, that we're seeing all around us. And you also use live examples. Yes. You, you mentioned a number of Nigerians who uh, have introduced what you might call a disruption. Yes, right. I like the story of Jason Njoku, for instance, yes. uh, where you know, after starting several businesses, yes. he then eventually found one that uh, was disruptive well, enough to, to turn, change, change the industry. What should young Nigerians learn from reading this book? You see, the word young, gives them the opportunity to start quickly, make the mistakes, and then recover. Mm. Just like the Bill Gates and the Steve Jobs of this world did. Yeah. They started early, and they took the risk. They made their mistakes. Even Steve Jobs was chased out of the company that they started, yeah. and he came and back he again. Back. Mm -hmm. You won't believe that he died before 60 years old, but what he has created is standing so strong today. So young Nigerians cannot afford to wait. They have to be calculative, take the risk early enough, and be solution-minded, and then start early. 
you will make the mistake, you will be corrected, you will correct yourself, and then you will pull strong. By the time you are early 30, you are standing strong. Mm. And then you'll be, and then because our world now, we have a very good demography, youth age. Mm. Technology can allow Nigeria and Africa to catch up. Mm. At some point, th this book reads a little bit like a motivational text as well, because yeah. you know, there's some parts where you were talking about the fact that fear is is pulls you back and pulls you back. Action uh, is a uh, action uh, cure to fear. Exactly, you said yeah. action is a cure to fear. And I said to myself that okay, this is instructive. Uh, a lot of times, people feel like, look, let me find something that uh, let me find a space that I can survive in and not take too many risks. Should we be taking risks in Africa, in Nigeria? Of course, the the, the lesser you take risk, the, the lesser opportunities open to you. Risk allowed you opportunities. It's a vista of opportunity. So when you when we take risk, I had a young even after forty, mm. when you take risk on yourself, you will find out that you you will not stay on the idle way mm. of things anymore. You will be pulled out of the idle way and then get into action. So when you take risk, you get into action and then you'll be able to produce results. You have to put results. So there's something you described in the book called the enterprise of creative thinking. Yes. Uh, it sounds like big English, you know, sometimes, it's, and it's scary as well. So when you say creative thinking, even business owners, when you have an employee that is doing a little bit too much creative thinking, you, you don't, you become suspicious of, of that one. Yeah. But what were you trying to say with that concept of creative thinking? The w well, either we like it or not, we are already engaged in creative thinking. The moment you, you breathe in and out every day, you go out and all that. And creative thinking not necessarily have to be a formal thing. Mm. Everybody engage in creative thinking, one way or the other. And so, for those who want to formalize it, imagine the creative um, industry we have. Now, the creative industry in the US is massive now, mm. driving the engine room for growth. So, when people engage in creative thinking, thinking deep, to do something that can affect the lives positively mm. is creative thinking. It doesn't have to be a book thing. You understand? You can create something and the solution starts out. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't pin someone down to studying four years, eight years in the university. You can be whatever you're doing, you're creative about it, and you create solutions. Mm. And so when you engage in that, you will be involved in creative thinking. Mm. And so we cannot afford, and when you're being involved, you want to move it to enlightened entrepreneurship, that we cut that bar from creative thinking to enlightened Light entrepreneurship, and then we will create, you know. Wow, uh, Ty Wolf, so thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. The book is Technology Disruption to Wrestle or to Unleash. And I would say, I would say to all young people out there, unleash, take that risk. That's what he has said. You know, take that risk and, you know, do something different. And don't move with the crowd. There was a, a diagram there where everybody was doing this, and then there was one guy who was on this other side. Amazing, amazing book. Thank you, Thank you so much for writing it and uh, for inspiring all of us. We're going to take a quick break now. I'm back with a conversation with Aderogba at the DJ on the show. Welcome back, Aderogba, DDG is an indie filmmaker, writer, producer, and author. He's deeply in love with African stories. Now, his journey as a filmmaker started very early after he watched Sawarode, a film <laughs> produced. I'm going to take that again. It's Sawarode. This is the yeah. one that you know that I don't know. Yes, I ought to do that. Sawarode. 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 Yes. OK, a film produced <laughs> by his mentor, Tunde Kalani. So far, he has worked on so many personal projects and also for clients. I'm mm. talking about TV, commercials, short films, documentaries. Mm. Oh, wow. And That's so a lot. much. Yeah. And yeah. That is first documentary, Hidden Euphoria, won Best Documentary at the Africa Smartphone Film Festival and just got nominated for Best Documentary at this year's AMVCA. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Well, for documentary, uh, that, that particular area of film okay it's not as easy as everyone thinks yeah uh, you and know. i don't think it's up for votes mm. no, no, no. it's, it's not, not it's a non-voting category yeah. yes. That's cool. yes. so are you optimistic uh you know as an artist yes mm. because okay. because it's my work and i wouldn't want to pick any other work okay. aside my work so mm. 
definitely I'm optimistic about it. Although uh, there are some documentaries on in the category also that is yeah. very that, that they're very nice also like Skin. Yeah. And uh, but then. Mm. For so me to for me to be for me to be recognized, yeah. it means I'm doing something very. Tell us well, about so. the yeah, nominated uh, documentary. Okay, so Idun Euphoria was made in 2018. Okay. okay. Uh, as a young filmmaker, I've always wanted to tell a story about the Makoko society and the people. So when I had the opportunity given to me by my friend Mide, so uh, I took the opportunity and I said, okay, fine. I need to travel to Lagos to tell this story. You know, it wasn't easy for me, but uh, with the help of my friends also, I had the opportunity to go there and to tell the story. Yeah. And we are here now. Uh, so I, I hear a lot of emotional stories, especially about that Makoko area mm -hmm. of Lagos. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you, we mentioned earlier that you've always been interested in African yes, stories. In African story, yes. But how do you find those stories? Uh, you know, these are things that they're around us. And uh, as an artist, as a filmmaker, you need, you need to pay attention to details, to stuff around you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, as a young kid, whenever I traveled to Lagos, I always saw this, this place on water. And, uh, you know, out of my curiosity and inquisitive, you know, I had to like read up on it, watch videos. And uh, I just decided, that, okay, fine, this is the story I want to tell next after shooting my short films and okay. Yeah, so okay. Eden Euphoria is my first documentary, actually. Okay. Mm. And then we, we did read that you won a smartphone yes. award. So did you shoot your short film with the uh, smartphone? You know, uh, Makoko is not, is not a place you can just go and carry a camera and shoot. Yeah. You know, uh, so though it was part of the stuff that I planned before going there. You know, you can't just carry your camera and say you want to go because so many people want to stop you okay. to do, because they believe that people just come there, mm. make money off there and Leave. not come back. Not come back. Mm. So uh, when I was shooting, it was kind of difficult for me to just carry a camera. So I had my, my cinematographer, Corey So I just told him to give me his iPhone 7 Plus. Mm. So most of the, most of the B-rolls that are in the documentary yeah. mm. were shot on the iPhone. On, on yes. The iPhone. yes. Wow. So I had to like submit for the festival for the smartphone, yeah. yes. So I won best documentary. Oh, okay. Amazing. No. That's amazing. Thank you very much. Because you know the you know I'm th trying to think of how you keep it steady, keep a phone steady enough. Oh, uh, did so, you use so tripods? Yes, yeah, some of the some of the some of the uh, bureaus were shot on handheld, and some of okay. them on uh, you know these Osmos. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, talking Andelt, about yes. um, going to communities and them not allowing you because they're afraid you wouldn't come back. Yeah. Now, what angle did you take your documentary from? The angle of shedding light or the angle of actually helping? Okay, like the helping, yes. Well, so, uh, like I said, it wasn't easy for, for us to go there and shoot, but we, with, the friend, with the help of my friend, Mide, she, she has lived there for like 16 years. Mm -hmm. So she, she took me to one of the leaders there. Okay. I spoke to him. I, I made him understand, that, okay, fine, this is not just for money or award this is what we want to do for the society to give to give awareness mm. and uh, after shooting the documentary like two weeks later or three weeks later i had like an ngo come to me that okay wow. fine we want to give back to the society so we went back there to give clothes food mm. for the kids mm. to the women to the mm, men and all. yes okay so like they saw they saw that it wasn't just about the money yeah, yeah. we went back there to to give them, some, to give them back yeah. all right so how do you plan now makoko is one community that is popular mm. now there are other communities in nigeria that haven't had so much attention and yes. considering you're yes. interested in telling african stories african how story. do you tend to find these communities and how do you intend to tell your stories uh just research mm. You know, I'm currently working on another project, okay. a documentary also, you know, just to tell a story about this particular set of people. And, uh, you know, like you say, it's just, it's just research. You read, you watch, you learn, you listen, you see, then you decide, okay, fine, this is what I want to do. You know, there are so many stories you want to do, yeah. but you need to be very careful, the one you want to pick next. Okay. Yeah, so at the end of the day also, you need to be aware that, okay, fine, it's not just me going to these societies. Am I safe? Yeah, you know, true. yeah, so yeah. those are the things that we put into consideration before we go ahead and shoot. Okay, so in, in your profile, we mentioned that um, Shower Roy there was one of your inspirations to, you know, before yes. you started making film. Mm -hmm. What was it about that particular film that made you want to become a filmmaker? Okay, so uh, as a kid, I saw Shower Roy there when I was like, I think I was nine or ten. Okay. okay. And I remember telling my mom and my dad that 
I want to make a film like this. You know, I didn't know what filmmaking was, mm. you know, but I just mm. told them that Logic I said it in your bio, I was like, Logic you know, my make, a real film by. Okay. And it wasn't because of anything else, but because of just the story, mm. the, the, the kind of story Tunic Lani told. Mm. You know, the society, the language, the beliefs, the cultures, yeah. those are the things that I really love to tell, you know, mm. you need to put my, my, my culture, my African culture, my Yoruba culture on the yeah. map. So when I saw the film, I loved it. Wow. And right from there, you know, I started studying his films, Tunic Lani films, wow. Nina for Lion. Wow. You know, this, these are people that tell African stories. Even up to now, hmm. they just, they like to like, you know, like, it's just, it's just, it's just the story that made me love it. And, and as, as you can see, with all these nominations and future yeah. awards that will definitely come, mm -hmm. I think you've, you've done amazingly. Thank you very much. Really. Thank you very um, much. I, I'm still mind blown by the cell phone video, uh, yeah. cell phone movie. movie that's, yeah. that's, Thank you very because much. I can imagine how much work it was. Obviously, mm. it wasn't edited on the phone. No, it wasn't. Of it course. Yeah, we showed them, we, we, yeah. we transferred to the laptop. Oh, but that's already. work, though. That, transferring. That is, you know, like, you, yeah. you, we couldn't even, like, bring out the phone. Wow. So just like, you know, like anchor chief and shoot, they are eating. Oh. So like you have to like wow. shoot along yeah. before before you if I were not even allowed to take drone shots. Yeah. Because they were wow. saying no, we have to pay, we have to pay. But okay. then we just have to like live with the clip that we have. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for coming to share this with us. And uh, good luck at the MVC. Yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah. soon, right? Yes. Yeah, pretty next soon. Month. Next, next month. month yeah. Ah, good luck. We'll be we'll looking be out for you. for you. Thank you very much. All Thank right. But we have a meal that's been prepared by our chef today in the kitchen. And we'd like you to have a taste. Okay. You better be that's hungry. Good, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's much. go. All right. All right, right here in the kitchen, yeah. Chef Ify yeah. has been doing something special for us. And, uh, yeah. No. Nope. She's right. been yeah. with yes. uh, Titi, so Titi. Yes. Over to you. Chef Ify has been blowing my mind. <laughs> yeah. Nice so, uh, Chef, Chef, tell tell them a bit about what we did in the kitchen today. We. We and Titi. So we <laughs> today we just did something simple but very healthy. Okay. So boiled yam with avocado puree. Fried egg and shrimps. Mm. Mm. So there's some so avocado puree under the, the egg yam. because I yes. was I was a witness yeah. to when she was applying it. Yes, no. she was <laughs> spreading right. the thing on yeah. the yam. Yeah. Right there. So this is this yam. Is yes, yes that's for you. you. So there's yam there. There's avocado pear. There's egg. There's ugu leaf. Yes, it's amazing. That's your reward. That's your, that's your, that's yes, your so. reward. I know, for right? Just for yam. Your hard work. That's your reward for your journey to Makuku. Mm-hmm. Uh. Where are you going to start? <laughs> I'll start in yeah. with the yam. Yeah. You know, I okay. just need to like, pay attention. <laughs> so uh, I love the fact that she added ugu leaf to the egg. So mm. I've, I've done that before, personally. And then yeah. when I did it uh, for some of my family members, they thought I was losing my mind. They didn't like it. <laughs> so how long do you fry the ugu before, mm. before putting the A minute egg or two, just mm. so that everything will be like fresh. It. Everything will be nice yeah. and fresh. Yes. You like it? Yeah, this is very nice. Excellent. I will give her like, mm. I see nine onions. Oh, nine and a half of a ten. <laughs> Give it a ten. Nice. Uh, we have to start rounding off the show now. Big thank you to our friends at Homely NG for the kitchen access. Yes, indeed. And of course, big shout out to everyone who was on the show today. All of you that tuned in. We love you. We love you. We're going to be heading to the garden once again. Mm. We yes. have a uh, saxophone. Special saxophone yes, we do. <laughs>